Okay. So we're talking about what we're wearing. And, you know, I think this question's a little outdated because not everybody wears a shirt with a collar anymore. All right? That used to be something. Um, so who's wearing denim, meaning you got jeans on? Who's got on jeans today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so about ten of us, all right, are wearing jeans. Okay. Helps if you got a pencil there, Miss Moore. Okay. Um, and then anybody got on a collared shirt today? A shirt with a collar on it? You got one, don't you? Yeah. All right. So we got one. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the difference between these two questions. All right. So who's wearing denim and a collared shirt? So that means you got to have both things on, right? Well, there's only one person doing that. Who is it? Marshall. Out of, I think there's 28 of us in here today. Okay. And then this one's interesting. Who's wearing denim or has a collared shirt? Do you have to meet both requirements? No, you could be either or. So that would be 11 out of 28. And so here's the thing. What's the major difference between those two questions? And or. And and or. Okay. They mean two different things. Okay. And means you got to meet all the characteristics, or either one would do. Okay? DeMonte. Thank you, baby. Okay? So that is the main difference between those two. Okay? That's the main difference between our two questions, right? And meaning I got to have both things, or either one would be all right. Okay? We could be counted. So what we're going to talk about today are two-way tables. And you've been looking at two-way tables for a long time, all right? We've, in fact, we've already looked at some this year. But we're going to use them to find probabilities and then calculating those probabilities by adding. And then we're going to talk about a Venn diagram. Anybody remember what that is? A Venn diagram? Yeah, a Venn diagram. Yeah, it's the two circles, at differences, and then the same. Yeah, what they share in commons in the middle and then the outside are the differences. You use them the most, like, in what, uh, English maybe? Do you yeah. use them in English? So we're going to talk about them a little bit, how we can use them in probability, okay? So jump over here to your sheet, and just for the sake of time, I'm going to give you some data from a class, all right? But I want to talk about what these two things are and see who can do what, right? So they talk about the taco tongue and the evil eyebrow, okay? Um, are those two abilities somehow related? Um, is it something you're born with? So taco tongue says you can roll your tongue. I can roll my tongue, all right? My mama cannot, but she thinks she can. And it's so funny to watch her because she'll look at me, she goes, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And she's just sticking her tongue out. I'm like, mama, you're not doing it, okay? And then the evil eyebrow, you can raise one eyebrow. I can't do it. My husband can do it on both sides. Like, I'm like, and then he can switch them, like make them alternate. I'm like, you are a freaking nature, okay? So anyway, can anybody do the evil eyebrow? Uh, oh, you did it. James did it. That's the one that impresses me the most. I don't know why. All right. But anyway, I can't do that either. So let me give you some data from a class. Write this down. So in this class, they had 15 people who could do both the evil eyebrow and the tongue. Okay. So they could do the evil eyebrow and the taco tongue. And they had five students who could do the taco tongue, but they couldn't do the eyebrow. Okay. And then they had three students who couldn't do the tongue, but they could do the eyebrow, and then seven that couldn't do either. Okay, so just getting some data from that class. All right, so let's total those across and down and talk about what happens, okay? So let's go across first. What's the total number of people who could do the taco tongue? 20. And the total who could not? 10. All right, and then let's go up and down. And let's talk about the total who could do the eyebrow, 18, and the total who could not, 12, okay? If I add those totals down and across, they should match. What do they match to be? 30, okay? So that is a two-way table, okay? It's got information in it about two different characteristics, okay? So two different characteristics, usually yes and no, um, about those characteristics, all right? So what I want to do for a second, if you notice, there are four blanks 
all right, in my Venn diagram, okay? And so what happens is this whole box represents my 30 total people. It's my entire sample space, okay? So the whole box is the entire population. Okay, it's my entire population. It's my 30 people, okay? So the easiest one to put in on your Venn diagram is the one where your people can do both things, all right? So in the middle is where we're going to be able to do both, all right? How many students could do both? 15, all right? It was this first number in our table. That is our both. So we're going to go in here in this middle, and that's where my both go. I have 15 people. All right, who can do both, all right? Now, let's talk about what's left over to go in the other spaces, okay? So, in this first circle, it's talking about the people who can do the taco tongue but can't do the evil eyebrow. How many people is that? Five. My five. It had to add up to my 20 total people. Okay, that were yes to the taco tongue. All right, so my five goes there. Okay. The next one that we want to put in are my ones who can only do the evil eyebrow. All right, but they can't do the tongue. Okay, how many people is that? That's three. Okay, that's these three people right here. Okay. And then outside the circles are the people who can't do either, okay? So how many people cannot do either? Seven, all right? It's that very last number. Okay, now when I look at my Venn diagram, when I look at my numbers inside that Venn diagram, guess what it should add up to? 30, does it add up to 30? Yes, 5 and 15 is 20, plus 3 is 23, plus 7 is 30. So it adds up to my entire population, which is 30. I feel like when you're doing a Venn diagram problem, that having the table helps, all right? Because you're just going to use all the numbers that are there, okay? The both, the neither, and then one or the other, okay? So we're using them. So now let's do a little probability. Okay, we know we've got 30 total people in this table, okay? So it says, suppose that we randomly choose a student from the class. Find the following probabilities. What is the probability that they can do the taco tongue, okay? How many total people can do the taco tongue? 20 out of how many? 30, okay? And let's just leave them as fractions. We could make them decimals. We could do all the things, okay? How many of our students, all right, could not do the taco tongue in any way, shape, or form? Oh, 12. Wait, 18. 10. 10. 10. If we go across the no taco tongue, all right, all the way across, 10 out of 20. Okay. Let's, I mean 30, sorry, not, I don't know why I put 20. It should be 30. Okay. Let's go over there to the evil eyebrow. Nalaya. Later. Conversation later. Okay, thank you. All right, so then let's do yes to the evil eyebrow, okay? So we're looking down that yes to the evil eyebrow, all right? How many people are yes to the evil eyebrow? 18, okay? It's that whole column is yes to the evil eyebrow out of 30. How many are no to the evil eyebrow? 12. Okay, that whole column is a no to the evil eyebrow. So now it gets a little more complicated, okay? Because this time we're going to throw some things in there, okay? This time they have to be yes to the taco and yes to the evil eyebrow. How many is that? 15, they got to be both yeses, so 15 out of 30, okay? 
How many of them are yes to the taco tongue and no to the evil eyebrow? We're looking for where those two rows and columns intersect. It's five. Okay. How many are yes to the evil eyebrow but no to the taco tongue? Three out of my 30. And how many are no and no? Seven. Okay. So we can pull those from our chart. We can pull them from our Venn diagram. Okay. If we go back to that first one where it says yes to the taco tongue, even the ones in the middle are yes to the taco tongue. So that's where I did 15 plus 5 and got that 20 right there. Okay. So you can do it from the Venn diagram. Okay. Well, now let's just make it a little more interesting. Okay. So it says, suppose that a randomly, we randomly choose a student from class. Find the probabilities that they are yes to the evil eyebrow. Okay. Well, we already did that, didn't we? How many were yes to the evil eyebrow? 18. And how many were no to the evil eyebrow? 12. Okay. So the probability... All right, that they are yes to the eyebrow or no to the eyebrow, okay, says that as long as I fit in one of those two categories, I'm good, right? So all we have to do is add them together. 18 over 30 plus 12 over 30 gives me 30 over 30, which is one, okay? That'd be all of them. Okay, that'd be all of them. They're either yes or no. You can't be both. Okay, so then let's look at it this way. Okay, so that's that addition property. What, how many were yes to the taco tongue? 20. How many were yes to the evil eyebrow? Ooh, 18 out of 30. Okay. Now, here's the hard part. On this one, it says that you're yes to the taco tongue or yes to the evil eyebrow. Okay. Are there some people that overlap in that group? Yeah. Okay. And we can't count anybody twice because here's the deal. If all we did was add these, like we did the one above it, I get 38 over 30. That's more than one. And probability can't be more than one. Okay? So we've... Okay. So we have to take out anybody that would be counted twice. Okay? Who do you think are the people that might be counted twice? Uh, the people who can do both. The people who can do both. The people in the middle. Okay, so the middle of my diagram. So I'm going to take out those people that can do both because I only want to count them once. Okay, I don't want to count them in both. I only want to count them once. So we're going to take that out. Okay, and then that leaves me with 23 out of 30. Okay, that is referred to as our general addition rule. We can't count anybody twice. Okay, so we subtracted out the both. Okay, we can't count anybody twice. Anybody that ends up in there twice, we have to take them back out. Okay, and so we have 23 over 30. All right, so let's write some things together. Okay, let's put some things together, kind of formalize this for a second. And then I need to do several examples with y'all, if that's okay, just so we get really good with this. Okay. Because it doesn't seem that terrible just at first glance, but there's a lot going on here. Okay, there's a lot going on. Okay, so let's take a look right here. Okay, when we talk about a two-way table, do y'all remember um, Punnett squares from biology? Okay, it's kind of that same thing. Okay, so this was learning target one. All right, so I've got these two events. All right, we'll call them A and B. OK, 
okay? And so with those two events, there's the yes and the no for those events. What did we, it was a new word, word we learned yesterday for not something. Do you remember? It starts with a C. Compliment. Yep. So this one would be A and not A, B and not B. Remember, that just means not. Oh. Okay. And then, like a Punnett square, it gives me some numbers. Okay. So I'm just filling in numbers to go in those places. All right. So just know that you're going to get numbers right there. You can do A and B. You can do B, but not A. You can do A, but not B. You can't do either one. Okay. So that very last one is a no no. So the numbers are going to go in there. That is a two way table. Okay, now the good news for you is you're not going to see that complement notation. They're going to be like, you know, pat your stomach and what's that you do? Pat your head and rub your stomach kind of thing. And it'll be yes and no, yes and no. Okay, so you won't see the complement stuff, but that's how we set it up. Okay, the next thing that we talk about is that general addition rule. All right, so that was our second learning target, the general addition rule, okay? Basically says if we have an or situation, okay, we add the probabilities and subtract anything that's counted twice. Okay, so the general addition rule, this is applying to our or probabilities, okay? We add our individual probabilities and then subtract anything that we've counted twice, okay? Now, they'll show you some big formal math, but you just don't need it, okay? Just remember, if it's an or, we're going to add, but subtract anything not counted twice. Brooklyn, get off that phone. All right. And then the last one was your Venn diagram. Okay, and Venn diagrams are really useful for us. Okay. And there are always four blanks we're gonna put in there. The middle says we can do both. The one by itself says we can do neither. Okay, so that's where we put a no-no. And this would be, I can only do one of that thing and only one of that thing, right? And we fill in our numbers. Together, all of those four numbers should add up to our population, okay? So bless you, all four numbers. Add up, she has the best laugh, to our population. Okay. All right. So I want to look at some examples, primarily because I'm going to do these today as well as the extra ones, okay? Because they use some notation that we need to be sure we understand, all right, by the time we get to the practice, and it's just four problems again today, all right? So not a ton. So it's asking me, is there a relationship between educational achievement and home ownership? So if we look at our table, all right, the question it's asking is, are they a high school graduate, yes or no? Do they own a home, yes or no? Okay, the first thing I need to find is the total number of people in this survey. Well, the good news for me, bada bing, bada boom, it told me over here <laughs> in the words, okay? So I don't have to take the time to add it all up. If I added across, added down, and got to my totals, my total population down here would be 500, 
All right? They told me that, so that's good. Okay. So the first thing it says is suppose that we define our events. G, is there a graduate? H, is there a homeowner? Okay. And so I want to find the probability of the complement of G. Okay. That means not G, so that they are not a high school graduate. That's what it's asking me. Okay. So high school graduates are on the top, yes and no. All right, get you some lunch. We'll finish when we get back. <laughs>